بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Uh, إن شاء الله today we'll start our lecture on antimicrobial chemotherapy and first we'll talk about antibacterial chemotherapy. Uh, first we'll have an introduction. Antimicrobial chemotherapy is the use of drugs to combat infectious agent. They include antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, and antiparasitics, which include antiprotozoal and anthelmintic drugs. Uh, so that we have uh, four types of antimicrobial chemotherapy: antibacterial, antiprotozoal, antifungal, and antiviral chemotherapy. Uh, first, inshallah, today our lecture regarding the antibacterial chemotherapy. First, we have a principle. We we'll talk about the hazards of the unnecessary use of antibiotics. Uh, as you know, especially in our country, there is an extensive use of antibiotics. Uh, most of these uses, or many of these uses, uh, are uh, unnecessary, so that uh, this can be associated with hazards. These hazards include uh, first resistance, the development of resistance for the antibiotics, uh, such as mycelium resistant Staphylococcus aureus, is a uh, uh, famous uh, infectious organism that is resistant for uh, many antibiotics. Then, uh, super infection also can arise from the irrational use of antibiotics, uh, such as that. Uh, caused by candida albicans or cholesteridium uh, 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 difficile also can cause super infection due to uh, the use of unnecessary uh, especially the broad spectrum antibiotics which can lead to uh, disturbance of the normal flora giving a rise or giving opportunity to uh, secondary bacterial inf uh, infection or fungal infection, uh, such as that caused by candida albican or cholesteridium uh, species. The third hazard is the incidence of the adverse drug reaction, especially the hypersensitivity reactions. Uh, many antibiotics can cause hypersensitivity reactions, such as uh, penicillin uh, and the other beta-lactam antibiotics, cephalosporins, all of these has uh, anti uh, has uh, hypersensitivity reactions uh, in some individuals. Is a bacteria is antibacterial therapy necessary for all bacterial infections? To answer these questions, uh, no, definitely no. Not all bacterial infections need to be treated with antibiotics, uh, such as boils, uh, which is an um, a common painful infection of the hair follicles and surrounding skin uh, scales. Uh, this is a boil, uh, not necessary to be treated uh, with antibiotics. Also, we have a bacillary dysentery uh, that, especially when there is no fever associated with a bacillary dysentery, and food poisoning that arise from Salmonella uh, organism, also not needed to be treated. Uh, with uh, antibiotics. Selection of appropriate antibiotic. Uh, we have many factors that can influence the choice of a suitable antibiotic for identified bacterial infection. Uh, these factors include the spectrum of antibiotic activity. And as you know, the different antibiotics have different spectrum of, of activities. Some of our uh, antibiotic have uh, narrow spectra, means that this antibiotic act on uh, certain uh, bacterial species or specific bacterial spe species. Broad spectrum antibiotic act on more bacterial species uh, or extended spectrum uh, anti uh, antibacterial uh, so that uh, the spectrum of uh, antibiotic activity will uh, influence the choice uh, of uh, antibiotic. Also, the bacterial resistance. And it's commonly in practice uh, the sensitivity test regarding the, uh, uh, the infection is done to uh, choose a suitable uh, antibiotic according to the bacteria resistance. 
Also, the pharmacokinetics of the antibiotics, uh, which uh, can influence the choice of antibiotic, uh, such as the distribution to the infected uh, site. Uh, for example, uh, regarding meningitis, we should uh, choose antibiotics that uh, we know that it will be distribute, uh, distributed on the central nervous system regarding the spinal cord and uh, the central uh, and, uh, and the central nervous system. Also, the adverse effects of the drug and the drug interactions. Also, this can uh, uh, influence the choice of a suitable uh, antibiotic. The clinical trials evidence of efficacy. Also, this uh, can influence the choice of a uh, suitable antibiotic uh, and uh, synergy, synergy with synergy with, uh, with other antibiotics uh, as well. Well, we, as we see in combination, many antibiotics uh, can be used in combination because they have a synergistic effects with each other. And we know that synerg synergies means one plus one is more than two, three, four, five, and so on. And the last, the cost. Uh, the cost also can influence the choice of antibiotic because if we have two antibiotics having the same effects, uh, one one uh, is cheaper and uh, the other uh, is more costly. We will choose definitely the cheaper uh, one. Uh, this is a medically important microorganism, gram-positive cocci, gram-positive bacilli, gram-negative cocci, and gram-negative uh, rods. Uh, anaerobic organism, spirochetes, mycoplasma, chlamydia, and other. Regarding the, neuro, uh, the spectrum of activity, for example, we have an azonazid, which is a narrow spectrum antibiotic because it only acts on the my, mycobacteria. So it receives or it only used for treatment of tuberculosis. Azonazid act on the on just only uh, act on and the mycobacteria so it's ha it has a narrow spectrum uh, of activity we have a tetracycline for example it's a broad spectrum antibiotic because it act on both gram negative and anaerobic organisms pyrochit mycoplasma chlamydia and rickettsia and, 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 and uh, amoeba so it have a broad uh, tetracyclines as a group has a broad spectrum of antimicrobial activity. We have also extended spectrum antimicrobial agents and this is uh, extended usually used for the, anti uh, for the antibiotics that having uh, antihistamonal activity so that it called extended mainly regarding antihistamonal activity. Uh, so uh, we will find it act on gram positive and sometimes uh, and, uh, also included uh, gram negative bacteria. We can classify the antibacterial drugs into four ma major groups. The first are the agents that interfere with the senses and the action of folate, including sulfonamides and trimethoprim. And the second group are the drugs that interfere with the bacterial cell wall bacterial icon synthesis, this is including uh, penicillins and cephalosporins. And the third group are the drugs that affect the bacterial protein synthesis, such as tetracycline, macrolides. And the fourth group are the agents that affect bacterial nucleic acid metabolism through inhibition of uh, uh, DNA gyrase enzyme such as such as the quinolones this group include the quinolones first we'll talk about the agents that interfere with the senses or action of folate we have sulfonamides and we have trimethoprim and pyrimethamine the bacteria cell should uh, synthesize uh, should synthesize its own folic acid to uh, which involved in the tetrahydrofolate which is very important as a folate coenzyme for the nucleotide uh, senses in the bacteria so because the bacterial cells can't use the folic acid from the host cells so it is necessary for the bacteria to synthesize its own folic acid 
the bacteria slide the folic acid from precursor substances such as the paramino benzoic acid which incorporated by the, the by a certain enzyme to form dihydro acid uh, acid uh, which for com which form uh, which uh, converted to dihydrofolate which converted to, to tetrahydrofolate uh, which uh, act as a coenzyme uh, important coenzyme that involved in the uh, bacterial uh, biological uh, biological uh, mechanisms <coughs> and sulfonamides here because sulfonamide resembles teshba baramino benzoic acid so the sulfonamide incorporated in the state of baramino benzoic acid we tell about that so that the bacteria cannot synthesize the dihydro folate and the will folate enzymes while the trimethoberim and albiramisamine whom they are inhibitor for the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase which convert dihydrofolate to tetrahydrofolate they have a reduction dihydrofolate they have a tetrahydrofolate which is called dihydrofolate reductase enzyme for trimethoberim and albiramisamine they have an inhibition for the enzyme and they have a reduction of the enzyme of the tetrahydrofolate وبالتالي هيقللوا من ال functions بتاعت ال ال folate coenzyme which is important for for the biological activity for the bacteria. Sulfonamides include sulfadiazine, sulfadiamidine, sulfamisoxazole, sulfadoxin, and sulfasalazine. The mechanism of action of sulfonamides, as I mentioned, they are structural analog of paramino benzoic acid. which are an essential precursor in the synthesis of folic acid in the bacteria so that sulfonamides due to this uh, simil similarity in the structural uh, compete with the paramino benzoic acid for the enzyme dihydrobutyrate synthesis sulfonamides are bacteriostatic in their action as you know uh, the antibiotics either will be uh, bacteriostatic that inhibit the cell growth or bactericidal that kill the bacteria They inhibit the bacteria growth, not kill them. The effect of sulfonamide can be overcome by adding excess paramino benzoic acid. Therefore, some local anesthetics such as the procaine, which can provide with the paramino benzoic acid, paramino benzoic acid ester, can antagonize the antibacterial effects of sulfonamide if they are used concomitantly. The action of sulfonamide is vitiated. Abolished, يعني اختفي ينتهي in the presence of pus or products of tissue breakdown because this contains cymidine and purines, which bacteria utilize directly by passing requirement of folic acid. Resistance to sulfonamide is common in practice now. The resistance to sulfonamides is very common. Clinical uses of sulfonamides combined with pyrimethamine. For drug-resistant malaria, uh, sulfonamide. We have sulfadoxin plus pyrimethamine, uh, called Fancidar, is used for uh, is used uh, for treatment of malaria. Also, we use sulf uh, sulfonamides in inflammatory bowel disease, uh, IBS, such as sulfasalazine. Also, we use we use the sulfonamide for infected parents. We use uh, sulfur sulfadiazine, we use them as cream or ointment or gel, even topica topically. Also, we use the sulfonamide for sexually transmitted infections uh, that caused by trachoma and chlamydia infections. Also, we use sulfonamides for acute urinary tract infections, but now seldom used, rarely used nowadays. Uh, we have agent. That interfere with the senses and action of folate. We have trimethoberim and dalbirimethamine, and we mentioned that both of these drugs inhibit the enzyme dihydrofolate reductase, so prevent the formation of tetrahydrofolate from dihydrofolate. They inhibit bacterial dihydrofolate reductase enzyme. They are bacteriostatic in their action. They are active against most common bacterial pathogens. Trimethoberim sometimes given in a, uh, as a mixture with sulfamisoxazole 
in combination famous combi uh, combination called co-tri misoxazole اللي هو known as septerine co-tri misoxazole uh, combination between sulfur misoxazole and uh, <coughs> and trimethoprim uh, while albirimethamine has uh, which has antimalarial action usually given in combination with sulfodoxin as I mentioned in a combination called fancy that uh, the brand name Uh, now we'll talk about the agents that interfere with the senses of bacterial cell wall that did like can. We have penicillins, and cephalosporins, and cefamycins, and the carbapenems. All of these agents tend to inhibit the bacterial wall synthesis, so through inhibition of a bacterial bacterial can. Uh, through inhibition of an enzyme that involved in the cross uh, in the cross links between peptide links uh, and these agents by default will be bacteri bactericidal because they inhibit a bacterial wall, cell wall synthesis and as you know from the, microbi uh, from the microbiological view the bacterial cell wall is very important for the bacteria because it prevents the bacteria from the surrounding env environment so when there is a failure in the senses of this uh, bacterial cell wall this will lead to that the bacteria will be affected by the surrounding env environment so that can easily be killed by uh, sub outside uh, substances Very uh, this agent include beta lactam antibiotics the structure behind the beta lactam ring and can say beta lactam antibiotics we include the penicillins cephalosporins sometimes we uh, like cephalosporins uh, as cephamycins or carbapenems or carbacifems and monobactams all of these are beta lactam antibiotics that act on a bacterial cell wall since uh, in, in, through inhibition of the bacterial cell wall uh, synthesis the mechanism of action they inhibit the trans peptidation enzyme that cross links the peptide chains attached to the backbone of the peptidoglycan this occur later uh, this occur as uh, this occurs after binding of beta lactam binding protein uh, on the uh, bacteria We have the phase the penicillins, the penicillins, uh, we have natural penicillin, natural penicillin include the benzyl penicillin, also called penicillin G, penicillin and my, borocaine penicillin, benzacine penicillin, denoxymethyl penicillin, also called uh, penicillin V, All, uh, the, this is the only penicillin available orally, the denoxymethyl penicillin all of uh, the others uh, are should be used uh, by parental uh, injection various system uh, semis, uh, various semi synthetic penicillins have been prepared by adding different side chains this including beta lactamase resistant penicillins fluoxacillin and coloxacillin beta lactamase resistant penicillin we know that beta lactam antibiotics are their action terminated through the enzyme beta lactamase. Beta lactamase is a lysis because the lactam ring is a beta lactamase enzyme. When you have a lactam ring, the antibiotic activity will be diminished. It 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 well, beta lactamase for enzymes are secreted by the uh, by some uh, species of bacteria. Vital bacteria had come here resistant to antibiotics. Here, the beta lactam antibiotic. We have when we do the changes in the sense of the the structure of these antibiotics. After the changes, the changes in the antibiotic is resistant to beta lactamase enzyme. Such as the fluoxacillin or coloxacillin. Coloxacillin, you can know, know, is in combination with the ampicillin called the ampiclox. Also, we have 
some of uh, broad spectrum penicillin, such as an ampicillin and amoxicillin, also here semi synthetic. Natural, natural occurring دي هي أصلا موجودة طبيعيا. أما semi synthetic عملنا لها عملنا لها إضافات ونتجت منها إضافة بتاع side chain في structure nuclear structure بتاع الانتيبايتيك ونتجت منه broad spectrum penicillin such as the ampicillin and the amoxicillin. Amoxicillin famous يعرفوا الأموكسيل والأمبيسيلين اللي هو قلنا موجود في الأمبيك لوكس مع كومبينيشن ويز كلوكسا سيلين. We have also extended spectrum penicillin such as the ticarcillin and اللي هو عنده antisodomonal activity as I mentioned في the first slide or second slide have also been developed to overcome the serious infection that caused by pseudomonas aeruginosa. We have a ticarcillin ده عنده extended spectrum extended لأنه هو active against pseudomonal aeruginosa which is which can cause a serious infections. Amoxicillin is sometimes combined with beta lactamase inhibitor called clavulonic acid. And this combination is called co-amoxiclav, and all of you know amoxilin, which is a combination between amoxicillin and clavulonic acid. Clavulonic acid ما عنده أي antibacterial activity. It's هو فقط بيعمل inhibition لل beta lactamase enzyme بتاع البكتيريا. فبالتالي هيد الشانس فرصة للأموكسيلين to produce its effect on the bacterial cell wall synthesis inhibition. The clinical uses of a penicillins. Penicillins are used for bone and joint infections that caused by Staphylococcus aureus, also bacterial meningitis that caused by Neisseria meningitis, also used for skin and soft tissue infections, and syphilis, gonorrhea, and UTI infection. All of these are sexually transmitted infections. Also, penicillins can be used for serious infection with pseudomonal aeruginosa, aeruginosa, as I mentioned, especially in extended spectrum penicillins, such as the ticarcillin and the bipenicillin. Unwanted effects of penicillin. The main unwanted effects are hypersensitivity in reactions that cause due to a degradation of the products of penicillin, resulting in skin rash and fever. أحيانا ممكن تعدلي لي فيت الأنا في علاقتك شوب ودي هي رير والإنديفيدي والله عندهم سنسيفي هايبر سنسيفي للبنسلين هم بيعرفوا الكلام ده من أول مرة يستخدموا أي واحد من البنسلين سو هو بيكون المريض عارف نفسه إذا خاصة إنه هو عنده تجربة استخدم بنسلين بيفور فدي ممكن دمين unwanted effects of بنسلين Hypersensitivity, we know, they can cause also the area nephritis, neurotoxicity sometimes, and hematologic toxicity. But these are rare adverse effects for penicillin. We have cephalosporin. Some, بعضهم منهم بيقولوا عليها كيفالوسبورين أو سيفالوسبورينز. And cefamycin, abbreviated by cefems. Cephalosporins grouped into generations by their antimicrobial properties. According to their spectrum of activity, we have different generation of cephalosporin. Actually, they are fourth generation. First, first generation cephalosporin, such as cephalexin and cefradine. These are the first design cephalosporin. We are mainly active against the gram-positive bacteria. Even here. A different generation of cephalosporin will mainly according to the spectrum of activity. We find that the first generation are mainly active against the gram-positive bacteria, while the second generation cephalosporin, such as cefuroxin, Maxil, famous with Maxil brand name, or cefachlor, are more extended spectrum cephalosporin. They have an activity. Against the gram-positive, we do more activity against gram-negative bacteria. But the third generation cefalosporin, such as cefotaxime, or ciftriaxone, or ciftazidine, 
سيفتي رايكزون اللي هم معروف بالساميك سون والسيفو تاكزين هم ديل دي ار سيل كانيش تيفالس بوري هم هاف سيجنيفيكانت جريتر اكتيفيتي مينلي اجينس الجرام نيجاتيف ان موست كيسز ويز ديكريز اكتيفيتي اجينس الجرام بوزيتيف اورجانيزم اذا في اون دي 3 سيل اون دي 3 جينيريشنز We will find that the most active, or regarding this this regeneration, the most active again again is a gram positive here, a first generation, and the most active again is a gram negative here, a third generation, while a second generation in the intermediate activity again is both gram positive and gram negative generation. Now we have another generation, who are fourth generation cephalus borin, such as the cephibim and uh, and a cep byron. They have true broad spectrum. They active against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria, so that they have an equal activity against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria, so that they are designed on a fourth generation, the fourth generation cephalosporins. The clinical use of cephalosporins, we they are used for septicemia, including cefuroxime and cefotaxime. Uh, pneumonia that caused by susceptible or organisms. Also, they uh, are used for meningitis. Uh, especially, we use uh, commonly uh, ceftriaxone and cefotaxime. Uh, biliary tract infection. Also, uh, the uh, UTI, especially in pregnancy and in patients, are responsive to other drugs because uh, they can safely use in pregnancy. Uh, sinusitis. The adverse effects of uh, cephalosporin and cefamycin include hypersensitivity reactions. Also, there is a cross sensitivity uh, with the penicillin. We will find that about 10% of individuals that who are sensitive to penicillin also they are sensitive to uh, cephalosporins. About 10% occur in penicillin sensitive individuals. Uh, this hypersensitivity reaction occurs as rashes, xenophilia, uh, also uh, DIT uh, symptoms uh, can uh, can occur as side effects of cephalosporin, hematologic abnormalities, telepathies, and fever also are adverse effects of cephalosporins. We have the carbapenems, here are the uh, cell wall, bacteria cell walls, senses inhibitors. We have a famous drug belonged to this group of drugs uh, in co uh, called imibnem. Imibnem is active against most gram positive and gram negative bacteria and anaerobic bacteria. It is stable against the beta lactamase endomase and was stable against the beta lactamase uh, enzyme. The enzyme dehydropeptidase 1. Who, uh, which is present on the renal tubule, the who are responsible for an inactivation beta imipenem. So, the imipenem were usually combined with a cilastatin, with cilastatin that bar an inhibitor of dehydropeptidase 1, which will help the metabolism of the imipenem. And this, uh, uh, this combination is the only available for IM and IV administration because oral bioavailability is poor for these uh, drugs. Imibnem uh, cilastatin is one of the drugs of choice for the empiric therapy of many polymicrobial pulmonary intra-abdominal and soft tissue infections. So, we can use it in the emergency uh, situations. لما يكون في نحن محتاجين نستخدم امبريك ثيرابي قبل ما بيفور وي نو ذا كوزيتيف اورجانيزم بيكوز زي هاف ا برود سبيكترم زي كفر بوز جرام بوزيتيف جرام نيجاتيف بكتيريا اند بالاضافه للانيروبيك بكتيريا اند ذيس برضو كمان ذا ادفانتج اوف ام 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 ذات ان هو ستيبل اجينست البيتا لاكتاميز انزيم ذات برودوس باي ذا بكتيريا The notable adverse effects of imibnem cilastatin uh, is the seizures which affect 1% of the patient. 
وده المين ادفيس افكت بتاع الديس كومبينيشن انهم يعملوا سيجرز كونفالشنز ودي ممكن تحصل في نسبه 1% اوف ذا بيشنز ذات تريد ويز ذيس كومبينيشن دراجز Now we have agents that disrupt the function of uh, 30 and 50S ribosomal subunits uh, so that they interfere with the protein synthesis of the bacteria. They call protein synthesis uh, inhibitors. We have tetracyclines, macrolides, and aminoglycosides. Uh, aminoglycosides have an inhibition of 30S ribosomal subunit. While the macrolides act on the 50s ribosomal subunits. Well, first, we'll talk about the tetracyclines. The mechanism of action of tetracycline is inhibition of protein synthesis by binding to 30s ribosomal unit and thereby prevent binding of an amino acid transferase RNA to the A site, which is about an acceptor site. That occur on 50S ribosomal subunit, بالتالي disrupt this uh, the protein synthesis which carried uh, out on a ribosome. We know that the protein synthesis is carried on uh, a ribosomes. So they are these drugs are protein synthesis inhibitors. Tetracycline penetrate microbial membranes and accumulate in the cytoplasm through an energy dependent tetracycline system that is absent from the mammalian cells. بالتالي هو ما كان not affect the mammalian cells. هو فقط بيحصل له accumulation في the microbial cells في the bacteria وبالتالي هو كان prevent the bacterial protein synthesis. Tetracycline are effective against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria including Rickettsia, Mycoplasma and Chlamydia species. The food Embers absorption of all tetracycline. لأنه بيعمل معهم chelation. Chelation بيحصل tetracycline. The food بذات ال data dairy products that containing calcium. They can cause بيعمل chelation مع tetracycline. وبالتالي this can prevent the absorption بتاع tetracycline. Except doxycycline و minocycline هم ما بيتأثروا مع بال بال food. Clinical use of tetracycline, we have aminocycline as an alternative, effective alternative to rifampicin for eradication of meningococci from nasovarix. Also, the tetracycline are still the drug of choice for treatment of cholera, and tetracycline are clinically effective uh, against acne, which is caused by propionibacterium acne. Very effective tetracycline. So, in practice, uh, you'll find that tetracycline are used for treatment of acne. Uh, regarding the adverse drug reaction of tetracycline, staining of pores, deciduous, and permanent teeth, and retardation of bone growth can occur if tetracycline are administered after fourth month of gestation or if they are given to children less than eight years of age. This is because tetracycline can retard the calcium through a chelation with the calcium, so that can cause permanent staining for the teeth that characterized by the yellow color. Uh, so they are contraindicated in the children that less in pregnancy and in children that less than eight years of age due to this uh, cause. We have a macrolide, as uh, we know that our macro macrolides are protein synthesis inhibitors. Uh, antibiotic of this group include erythromycin, 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 and spiramycin. Macrolides bind to 50S ribosomal subunit of the bacteria, leading to the inhibition of translocation, translocation peptide bond formation and release of oligopeptidyl tRNA. So that they can inhibit bacterial protein synthesis through this mechanism. Indication of macrolides include treatment of mycoplasma, pneumonia, infections, and eradication of Corynebacterium diphtheria from pharyngeal caries and chlamydial conjunctivitis, and the prevention of secondary pneumonia in neonates. Adverse direct reactions of macrolides 
the macrolides famous with the DIT uh, symptoms, they can cause mild DIT upset with nausea, diarrhea, and abdominal. Uh, also, they can cause cholestatic jaundice. Macrolides also, but rarely, can cause transient uh, deafness or to toxicity, especially erythromycin at a high dosage. Erythromycin also has been associated with irreversible hearing loss. Uh, these are the symptoms, uh, these are adverse drug reactions that are associated with macrolides, DIT disturbances, jaundice, and autotoxicity. We have now the amino glycosides. They include gentamicin, streptomycin, amicacin, tobramycin, and neomycin. They work by binding to the bacteria CRTS ribosomal subunit. Some work by binding to the 50S ribosomal uh, subunit, inhibiting the, inhibiting the translocation of, of peptidyl tRNA from the A side to the B side and also causing misleading, uh, misleading for messenger RNA, leaving the bacterium unable to synthesize vital proteins to its cross. They are bactericidal, their effect enhanced, they are bactericidal, their effect enhanced by the cell wall synthesis inhibitors, such as the beta-lactam beta antibiotics. They don't penetrate into the CNS, so in case of uh, meningitis, they are uh, not a good choice because they cannot penetrate uh, into the CNS, uh, because they are polar I mean, amino glycoside are polar compound, so they have uh, they have less limit uh, solubility. They are they are effective against many uh, aerobic gram negative and gram positive uh, bacteria. The adverse direct reaction of amino glycosides first they can cause autotoxicity due to the prog uh, due to progressive damage of sensory cells in the cochlea and vestibular organs leading to vertigo and ataxia. Also, they can cause nephrotoxicity due to, the, uh, due to the damage of the kidney tubules, so that the concomitant use of uh, amino glycoside with another nephrotoxic drugs can increase the, the risk of nephrotoxicity. Also, the concomitant use of uh, amino glycoside with uh, autotoxic drugs, such as uh, loop diuretics, is contraindicated because this can potentiate the autotoxicity of an amino glycoside and uh, loop diuretics can auto, uh, potentiate the autotoxicity that produced by uh, amino glycosides. Also, amino, amino glycosides can cause neuromuscular blockage due to the inhibition of calcium uptake, so that it can result in neuromuscular uh, blockage. Uh, also, an amino glycoside can cause skin rush. Uh, this is uh, adverse effects of amino glycoside, autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, paralysis due to the uh, neuromuscular blockage, and skin rush. Last, we have the agents that affect bacterial nucleic acid synthesis, and we have uh, the quinolones. And quinolones act through inhibition of a DNA gyrase, which is an important enzyme for the replication of a DNA. Uh, also, they can also inhibit a uh, topoisomerase, an enzyme that involved in the separation of a daughter DNA from a uh, from uh, daughter cells, daughter DNA cells, uh, so that they can inhibit a nucleic acid uh, metabolism. Quinolones include Nalidixic acid, norfloxacin, subrofloxacin, ofloxacin, and lomifloxacin. They inhibit DNA synthesis through, uh, through their specific action on a DNA gyrases enzymes. A second target for a fluoroquinolones is the uh, tobo-isomerase type 4, which is responsible for the separation of the daughter cells from the uh, following, after, uh, following or after the cell replication. The effect of quinolones on the on the DNA enzymes is initially bacteriostatic, but becomes bactericidal when the bacteria are unable, fail to repair the DNA lesions that caused uh, during a replication or during uh, cell processes. 
The clinical uses of quinolones, uh, therapeutic uses of quinolones include uh, urinary respiratory tract infection and GIT abdominal uh, infection. Uh, adverse uh, drug reactions that caused by quinolones, they cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. The use of quinolones in pregnant and breastfeeding women is contraindicated. All quinolones interact with the multivalent cations forming chelation complexes resulting in reduced absorption. So it's wise to uh, advise the patient not to take quinolones after food or especially after dairy products due to the chelation can uh, with the quinolones. This is an adverse effects, diarrhea, nausea, headache, dizziness, and also can cause tendon rupture. Uh, that is all regarding this lecture which, uh, in which we talk about an antibacterial chemotherapy, the one of the antimicrobial chemotherapy. Uh, thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.